Welcome to Empowering Innovators, the series where we talk about innovation, the startup way. Today I have with me Martin Wilde, the Chief Innovation Officer at MediaMark Saturn. Welcome Martin. Hi Patrick, thanks for having me. Um, let's go back to uh, 1997 when you started uh, Home of Hardware. Well, why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? Well, I was a very big um, computer. I, I loved computers, computers were my hobby. So I realized that the, the business was growing and I said, wait, I, I know how to do it. So let's just try it out. I did not have a business case. So I just got an, back then you needed a, a little paper that allowed you to do business. And I started the business uh, because I saw the market is not really professionally already fulfilled and that's the reason why I started without really thinking what would happen next. And did you start by yourself or did you start with a co-founder? No, actually I started by myself only. Uh, in the first years Home of Hardware was focusing on, on doing computer services and small hardware sales and in 2002 Home of Hardware became an online business only and right. then I, I got two friends uh, helping me because I was traveling a lot and they helped me to ship the pa packages and stuff like that. So we all said it's just a little extra money we will earn with the, with the whole business. So never, never plan to become, to make that big. So you felt the opportunity basically and said, let's move into online, which was quite early, right? E-commerce in 2000 and end of 2001, early 2002. Yes. Well, it was just after the bubble, right? right. I, I saw that right. the whole, I would not, I didn't want to go into regular retail. So online was early yeah. and we started actually on eBay because eBay was a very easy start, right? We sold a few products and we saw the demand is very high uh, and that's then when we decided to, to launch an on online shop, um, bought the software and started very, very lean bootstrapped without any external money, right. making money from day one because we did not have money to lose, so no other option. But that's great, bootstrapping a company from zero to 50 million eventually in revenues a few years later. 80. 80, 80 well, that was the end when you sold it, yes. I think, the company. But you know, how did that feel? You know, did you just reinvest all the, the basically the business that you made directly into the company again? Yes, we, well, we apparently we took some money to live, but the rest we invested into growing and it grew really, really fast. So it was always planned as an extra, just a little bit on top. Yeah. And after the first year, it was like, I don't know, a few thousand percent and then growing a few hundred percent every year. Uh, and we couldn't even grasp how fast it was growing because the market was growing apparently and consumer electronics back then was already very interesting for consumers buying online. Yeah. Uh, so really, really fortunate to make that happen. Well, how did that, what did that mean to your life? I mean, going from basically university and then directly into doing business, I guess your life must have changed, especially since you were riding a wave that was becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, it was very, very stressful. In the beginning, we still had a lot of fun. So we were a group of 20 people. We had time to play some computer games in the morning. We came early to the office and played against each other. And after time, it became more and more stressful because the business was growing that fast and we had to grow because the market was growing. So you can imagine that it's a lot of stress, but I, loved, I always loved my job. And I remember I made my hobby, hobby to my job. So that helped a lot, um, but I, I did not really plan that. So it was really yeah. interesting. And I learned on the job because um, from university, apparently I did not have all the knowledge I needed. So I learned logistics, I learned um, finance, I learned all the processes you need to run this business. I, I learned HR, uh, really learning all the, all the functions on the job, which is really uh, also interesting, but I, I loved it. Yeah. And if, you, if you're, you're talking about that it was stressful, but on the other side, it was also very energizing, I guess. Um, how do you keep that balance while a company is growing and probably demanding more and more hours a day from you as a person? It's not easy. I think you, you need to definitely make sure that you have enough time for your to, to relax and, and step back a little bit, which was in the end not really working as good for me anymore. I, my knee, I got a knee, a knee surgery and then I, was, I could not do sports. I'm a, I love to do sports. I could not do it anymore. So I was a little bit overstressed. Uh, so l I learned that it's very important to b have the right balance because if you don't have that, you will not be able to, sure. to bring this energy to the, to the work every day. Yeah. So that is one of my learnings I, I definitely have. And is that one of the reasons that eventually you decided, okay, maybe it's a good momentum now to basically sell the company? Well, I saw that the market was growing constantly. And at the same time, we have, we have been 
I, I was always, I was under 30 still, right? Um, no diploma in my pocket because I grow the business. And the banks were saying, yeah, that's really nice of you, but you do e-commerce and call you the business. That's a little funny. So I said, we need to grow to the next level. And I was looking for a strategic partner. Mm. And that's the reason why I was actively looking for one, yeah. found one. And we said together, yes, now it's a good time to maybe even consolidate the European marketplace uh, back then, 2007. Um, the market back then was in a very very interesting phase apparently we didn't know, we didn't think about the financial crisis that was coming up 2008 but nobody no. nobody saw this coming and you, and you took a break i took a break um we wanted to do a, a trip around the world we had, i had two kids which i don't know how i got them but no <laughs> i was working all the time apparently so sure. I, I did not have too much time and i said now it's time to spend the time with the family yeah. right um, i think sabbatical was just about to be used it was not that common yet and we said, let's do, let's do a trip around the world with the kids. And we plan to stay, to go around the world for one and a half years and, and enjoy life and enjoy family time. And what did you learn from that time? Um, it, the, one of the best times in my life, I, I, I recommend to everybody to step back. Well, I, apparently I started to work really strong, hard with 18, right? So I never got, got those, what you usually do as a student and hang right. out and fun. I never had this. So I really started working with 18. And I said with 30 or 29, it's now time for a first uh, retirement phase. Uh, and stepping back, looking at the world from a different angle is so important from my point of view. Then at first time, I realized really how my friends who were all in big corporates growing and, and having good jobs, how much stress they had. And if you inside, you don't even see it in this, uh, in this circle from outside. It's so interesting. And I got a complete new relationship to my family, to my kids. So I learned that it's very important to, to step back and really think about what do I want to do next. Right. So I recommend to everybody, if you have a chance in life where you change a job or go into a new business, take a few months and do something different. And this, I, back then I read one book which, which was recommended. It's called The 4-Hour Week. Yeah. And this guy it is my favorite book. And this guy, uh, I, I took a lot of his examples. And one of his uh, is uh, do early retirement phases and really see what do you want to do next with your life and not just be in there and wait until it's too late to decide for something. Right. And did you there also have the epiphany to go into a different environment with your life? Maybe staying still in yes. electronics, but going into the corporate world, right? No, oh, actually, no, I, I, plan to stay in, I plan to stay in the United States. I, didn't wanna, okay. I, I never planned to go to the corporate world at okay. all. And I plan to stay there and then a headhunter um, found me on LinkedIn and, and told me that there's somebody in Germany that is helping, needs help in e-commerce and consumer electronics. Uh, I thought about it a long time and then I decided to join the corporate work for the first time in my life of, of 30, 31 back then. And, and do you feel that you still can be the entrepreneur or entrepreneur that you were in the early days uh, when you started your, your first company and, and successfully sold that eventually? Well, in the beginning, it, it was not as easy because first, I apparently had to gain trust, right? They did not know me. They gave me a lot of, a lot of early trust, but not the full trust I was, I was used to. Uh, now in my new role, in my actual role as chief innovation officer, I have, it, it's, I think it's the coolest job um, I, I, for me I can have in, in the company, probably in, in whole retail. I have a lot of freedom. I, I work like an entrepreneur but I get the power of a big corporate. Um, the, more or less the best of both worlds, apparently not 100%, um, but it's so important to have this freedom and the power to really execute and also try out. If you, if you always only discuss, you will never innovate, Correct. really. It's about execution eventually, right? It's about and execution and taking decisions. Let's maybe shortly go back to, to startups and scale-ups and entrepreneurship, which is in, in your veins, yes. basically. You're an entrepreneur still, although yes. you're in a large company. H how do you bring that spirit of entrepreneurship and, and also the spirit of that not everything that you will start will eventually be successful to your team? Yeah, but very important. We, we adapted a fail-forward strategy into your company. Really say, fail forward. Fail forward, fail fast. So really, you know, Germans always want to do it perfect, right? They, they say we do it perfect and then we launch. And why we do that, other, other people from around the world already build a concept that is rolling out across the world, right? So we said, no, we need to change this. Apparently, this is not true if we deploy a new ERP system. We, we Correct. Make this, we make Correct. that right. You want right? to make sure that it's fixed. That's but right. but if, it's, if it's a pilot project, a new innovation, yeah. we try to build an MVP, a minimal viable product that's going live as soon as possible. And we usually do this with a startup together. So uh, we founded Retail Tech Hub. Retail Tech Hub is a startup innovation. It's an innovation platform. I sometimes call it Tinder 
uh, Tinder between startups and corporates. So we look for startups out there that are interesting. Um, we, take, we, we, we understand them, we talk to them, we connect them to our team, sometimes to domain owners. Um, we build a pilot. Um, we, always, we, we have no business case for the pilot. So we really want to experiment, we want to learn, does it work? What's the result? Yeah. Um, we're taking it live, hopefully after a few weeks, sometimes after a few months. Uh, the project is live, consumer facing usually, or at least employee facing, depending on the use case. Sure. And we learn from that. And sometimes we fail. Yeah. But it's important to talk about the fails you have and to help everybody to understand it's not wrong that you fail because I think the worst case you can do is innovation unit. You try to make it work every time because you want to show that you succeed and then maybe the first two projects go totally wrong and then your whole innovation stops. Unit stops. Yeah, so it's yeah, so, yeah. so important to say, yeah. okay, wrong, too early, whatever, uh, wrong team, wrong setup, stop it, kill it. Right. Maybe try it again later or maybe try something else. And what's the stage that these startups are in? Are they still in the startup phase, in the MVP stage, or are they already in the scale-up phase and have proven that they can work with other corporates as well? Because it's not so easy, right, for it's, a young, small company to work with a large company like Medium Action. We mostly look for startups that are already in the scale-up phase, yeah. so they need to be able to pilot. Right. Uh, sometimes we have a little younger ones, and sometimes we had just a year ago a team that, that broke apart because they did not understand each other. That happens, so we, yeah. we try to focus on really scale-ups that are able to pilot and to execute fast. Uh, sometimes even with the small ones it works, but for us important is the, the most important topic is that we are able to pilot together yeah. and to make something that customers can feel, not just uh, discuss how it could look like in the yeah. future. And, and touching upon the entrepreneur side again and, and bringing those examples to your team members, is, is entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship a career path now within the company? Not yet. We are. That's something we are evaluating right now. So most innovation today is still brought from outside, from startups, because I, I really believe that they always have a different view and they don't see the problems that we see internally and they just make it happen. Right. So that's why I love to work with right. them and they're full passionate. Apparently internal, we also have this, some people have this DNA and they want to make it happen. And we are just about to set up uh, a program where we allow them to work on the idea, help them to make it happen and hopefully then help them to launch something on their own, uh, which is we are just evaluating now and hopefully we, we find something that's, that's working. I got a great book for you. It's about sports. It was written by this lady, uh, Bibian Mental. You might have heard about her. She's Dutch. Um, she's a Paralympic gold uh, medalist, mm -hmm. uh, but also got diagnosed with cancer uh, okay. over eight times. And the book is called Live and it's about dealing with sports, family, but also creating a business around what you do and the hard times uh, and how to overcome them basically in life. So I hope since you like sports as well, you just told me yeah. before, uh, it will be a great source of inspiration for you as well. We support Bibian and our foundation where uh, she basically helps young children mm -hmm. and young adults who have a disability to go into sports because we both know how important yes. it is to do sports, also to free your mind and uh, to achieve things in, uh, in life. So I hope you will enjoy it. Let me know if you did. And then I hope to see you soon again. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for the book.